you guys have been following the channel, you know last year I made a video around this time of the year, um, the beginning of 2019, uh, talking about my goals for the year. And this is gonna be kind of a follow-up video to that, explaining what goals we hit, what goals we didn't hit, um, and talking a little bit about that. And I just wanted to start off by saying, first off, if you're not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed, but also like, I didn't hit all my goals in this, and it's gonna be pretty evident. One of my goals was to get 40,000 subscribers on YouTube, which you can see, we didn't do that. So not every goal you're gonna be able to achieve, and if you are achieving every single goal, you gotta set your goals higher. Failing on the goals that you've set for yourself, really, I don't see as a failure, um, and that's something I just wanted to mention to a lot of people because sometimes plans change or things change, which is exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video because that's what happened with me. So stick around, let's get right into the video. All right, so I know I had a couple people ask about it, but you can see back here, we do have a new excavator in the shop. This is a Takuchi TV230. As you can see, it's green. It was a Sun Belt rental. I know a lot of you guys love the equipment. So basically we bought this for a tax write-off um, and just fixing it up. It's a winter project. So uh, yeah, we, you can see this whole side. It, like We think it got tipped on its side, honestly, here. But look, at it's all scuffed up along the side. Um, yeah, if you guys want to see more about that machine and the restore, restoration process of that, throw a comment down below. Let me know if you want to see that. So I'm going to watch this old video quick, uh, try to remember some of these goals, um, and go from there. Okay, so one of the first goals that we made mention of in the video, um, which I just already mentioned, it, it was 40,000 subscribers I think we wanted to get or something like that on uh, YouTube. And you can see we definitely didn't get that. Um, and there's a couple reasons why. And it's not like... I'm ashamed of it or anything like that because I mean here's the plain and simple facts we got so much work this year and got so busy um, and I got so into like working and things that I didn't have time um, or really the energy or want to make videos and that's why videos throughout the summer were super lacking I don't think I made a single video like the whole fall for like three months in a row so obviously I knew that goal wasn't gonna be achieved um, and mainly because I was so busy and wrapped up in other things I didn't have the time to make videos. So one of my things for this year is I really wanna to try to get somebody um, to help with the video process. So if you guys are in the area and you wanna film videos with us and get paid to do it, let me know. But that's kind of one of my goals this year, again, is to get to that 40,000 mark or you know get more subscribers and I really wanna to try to grow this channel um, because one of my most favorite things about doing all this is connecting with all you guys. It's literally so much fun. We've got the Green Expo coming up um, and we're meeting up with a bunch of other guys from the area, other contractors, and it's gonna be a blast. So I'm so excited to meet new people in the industry, um, other landscapers, excavation guys, things like that. So tons of fun there. That's why I love making these videos. So that was one of the goals we didn't hit. And like I said, it's not like, oh God, you know, we didn't hit the goal, this, that. You know, goals are there um, to keep pushing you. And uh, I think that goal was probably set a little high because I didn't realize how much work um, our marketing and stuff was gonna actually bring in and how busy we were gonna be this year. So that was, there was a trade off and I decided, you know what, build the company instead of build the YouTube channel right now. Because part of it is, the more the company grows, the more content in the future we can get and the more experience I have so I can share that experience with you guys. 
And that kind of leads us right into the next one, which is the goal of doing $200,000 in sales I had last year. I had so many people comment and talk about this um, for the goal of $200,000 in sales. Uh, Garrett with GNM Outdoor Services, I actually saw at the Green Expo, which we're going to next week. I'm gonna see him there next week. Um, when I ran into him there last year, he was telling me that goal is totally achievable and I had multiple other people message me saying, yeah, dude, that goal is achievable. Like, you can definitely do it. Super supportive. So thank you all you guys for the support. That's freaking awesome. I love it. But we totally surpassed that goal this year. Um, and I know a lot of people don't like sharing this stuff, but for me, it just comes naturally to share it because at the end of the day, you know, like I'm, I'm proud of what we do. I'm proud of the work we do and I'm not ashamed of that in any way. But we did 300, I think it was just under $350,000 in sales this year. Um, and I, I honestly, blown away. I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. That was incredible for us. So that is why I was so freaking busy this summer. I didn't have the time to make as many videos. You can kind of see why. So for all you young entrepreneurs out there, you guys starting your businesses, that $200,000 in sales your first year, if you have the experience, now granted, I do have already eight years of experience working with the equipment. I've already got a couple of years of experience selling this stuff and marketing. So if you have the experience, you can definitely do it. You just gotta get out there and do it. Plus, with that said, the economy right now is freaking phenomenal. We've never had an economy this strong. So that is also a huge factor into it. I know the timing's right and all that stuff, but for you guys out there thinking about taking that leap, you can definitely do it. You can go from zero to six figures in one year. Like, you can do it. You just gotta get out there and you gotta go do it. And you gotta make things happen. That's the biggest thing, is every single day, just work towards something. Whether that be a small goal, um, meeting a new person, emailing a new person, um, you know, setting up a new system, or setting up QuickBooks, or setting up whatever it is, just work towards one small thing each day, and eventually like everything just keeps growing. Hire a new person, or put an ad out on Indeed for new people, or something like that. So yeah, that's, it, you guys can do it. You can do it. Okay, so one of the next goals was um, spending more time enjoying work and just kind of stressing out less. Now I will say, the stress level this year definitely was like way up, right? Because like there were so many new things that I was taking on, um, being like the sole owner like, and like responsible for everything at the end of the day, like stress level was way up. So I can't say I achieved the less stress, but I definitely achieved enjoying work more. Literally every single day I was actually excited to get up and go to work. Part of it was like, I was in an area I really loved, like the whole sales side of it, marketing and like kind of managing the business. I just love that side of things. Like I do love getting out there and doing the work too, but to some extent, like I just, I can't be out there like digging holes or working with an excavator or a skid loader every single day of the week forever because I just kind of get bored with that. I enjoy interacting with people, hence why I'm here talking to a camera on the back of a truck right now. But you know what I mean? Like I just love that. So that, I would say I definitely achieved that goal this year. Um, the stress level went up, but because of how much more I actually enjoyed what I was doing, um, I would say it was 100% worth it. No doubt, 100% worth it. All right, so one of my other goals I had, um, I think it was goal number four or something, was basically to have one big business purchase and to have one big personal purchase. Um, and it was kind of hit or miss. I mean, they kind of go hand in hand, but one of the, I mean, I had multiple big business purchases and um, like I said, we had a great year. Um, so I was able to literally reinvest everything back into the business pretty much. Everything I made was pretty much, I mean, ask the girlfriend. I didn't spend like any money this year, right? It was all just right back in the business. So a couple of the business purchases we made this year was a new pickup truck, um, not new, it was used, but um, new to me, uh, 2017 F250. You guys are familiar with that if you've been watching the videos. Um, great truck, love it. It's just an XLT. You know, it's nothing fancy, but it gets the job done. It's nice, and the biggest thing is it like it's reliable. I don't have to worry about like that. 60 was great, fun truck, super cool. You know, hip, young kid stuff. But this truck, it just works, and it just works. Like the 60 was kind of like, eh, is it gonna start today? It's like negative 20. Um, is something gonna break? Are we gonna need to replace the brakes? Are we gonna need this, that? Like the new truck, it just works, and that was such a huge thing. And something I could recommend to so many of you guys like out there starting your business. I understand like taking that leap of faith, like financing a truck, which is what we did. Um, it can be scary. Like it was super scary. Like that was the first loan I ever took out from a bank on anything ever. And it was like, it was scary. But I'm telling you like, obviously don't overextend yourself. 
but to an extent, like having new equipment that just works and isn't going to break down, you don't have to waste your time or money like with downtime in the middle of a job that needs to get done right now or a snowstorm or something like that and you're out there trying to find somebody that's open that can repair your truck because it broke down or you're out there laying underneath your truck in the middle of a snowstorm. My idea and like ideology or whatever you want to call it um, is basically this, like if I can go to work every day if I have to spend more money on a truck or spend more money on equipment or people or something like that and it makes me happier and excited to go to work, that means I can work longer and get more work done because I'm excited to be there, I'm excited to do what I'm doing. Um, so that's worth the extra money to me. That's why we usually pay our guys more than most other people. Um, we pay our subs more than most other people. Um, bonuses and we've got you know newer equipment and everything relatively. With that, one of our other purchases was a 1990 Ford L9000 quad axle dump truck. And that thing's old. You guys might have seen it if you watched one of the other videos about it. Um, but it's a good truck. Like, you know, it works. And that was a $40,000 purchase. So that was a big purchase. Um, kind of a big gamble because it is an older truck. But at the end of the day, we can't afford buying a brand new one. It's the first quad axle we've ever owned. So it's the first bigger truck we've ever owned and we just couldn't, we, I couldn't stomach buying a $250,000, $200,000 brand new quad axle truck. So we had to start with something older, see if it's what we wanted, you know, kind of test the water, so to speak. Um, and then next year or so on and so forth in the future, we'll kind of go all in from there. So you guys, like, it's different for everybody. You gotta understand the situation you're in, but I'm telling you, if you are in the situation or have the ability to, Buying that new equipment or relatively new, the truck wasn't brand new, you know, it had 14,000 miles on it, 15,000 miles on it, but it was new enough to the point where things weren't gonna always be breaking and I was gonna be down with repairs and things like that. So you gotta find that happy medium. I think that's really important because the happier you are, less stressed out about stuff breaking down, the more you can focus on the job that's gonna actually make you money. Repairing your broken trucks doesn't make you money, not at all. So the other part of that was the personal, buying something personal. What I was really thinking is real estate or something like that, multifamily um, house. Uh, and I had the opportunity to a couple of times, you know, we could have done it, but at the end of the day I realized, okay, that's great, but if I put this money back into the business, buy new equipment, buy things like that, at the end of the day, that's gonna make me a lot more money than buying a multifamily house or something like that right now. My investment is gonna like, you know, whatever, they double itself a lot sooner than what it would have if I bought a house or something like that and was renting it out to people. So that's why as of now, I opted out of buying a house, just really pushing that back, trying to keep as much money as I possibly can in the business. And on that note, for those of you that are wondering, 2019, I did not pay myself a dime. Didn't pay myself a dime. We did over $340,000 in sales and I didn't pay myself a dime. So it's all gone back into the business. Now the profit margins on that are whatever. I'm not gonna share those with people because I don't need to be sharing profit margins on stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, the sales and the healthy business, you guys can do the math and kind of guess for yourselves. So one of the last goals, and this one I actually got a lot of hate for, I think, um, it was actually pretty funny, but it was kind of, I was talking about how I wanted to try to develop our team better on our landscape crew and things like that because I want to be able to step back and kind of go into more of a man manager, manager, manager position, manager, manager, I don't know, something like that, right? So I'd like to be able to focus on sales, focus on marketing, um, growing the business, where we wanna like um, split off into to diversify the company, things like that. And I got a lot of hate because everyone's like, oh, you just don't wanna like work out in the field and do this and that and like blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, I've, I've worked out in the field for the last eight years. Like I've done this since I was like in middle school, guys, like it's, I am 21, gonna be 22 soon, but I've done this since I, four, I was 14 years old, 13 years old, something like that. Like full, like every single summer when I was out of school, I was working full time, right? So I've got a lot of experience doing it. And the one thing I've learned after that many years, like six, seven, eight years, whatever it is, the one thing I've learned after watching my dad is you cannot grow a company when you are out in the field, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. working installing the product you are selling, right? You know, whether it's pavers, it's lawn care, it's landscaping, it's an excavation project, whatever it is, you can't be out there in the field doing it every single day and then go home, do estimates, invoices, things like that, and marketing and put together plans like that and try to grow the business. You just can't, you get burnt out. And that was one of the things I realized this year is you do get like, I was always like, burnt out, whatever. Like, I'm 21, I can do whatever I want, right? 
no, you get burnt out. Like, trust me, you will get burnt out. Um, so you gotta find like that happy medium. Like you can't just be out there working 20 hour days, you know, 14 in the field, 12 in the field, and then go back and put another five, six at home at the office and try to get stuff done and moving forward. I did that, like it's not, you can do it, not for a long time though. You just, you're going to get burnt out. So one of the things I've always realized from watching him was that he needed to be able to find the good enough or good people that can manage the crew and run the landscape crew or either your dirt work crew or your lawn care crew whatever it is you guys got so you can step back focus on putting the right people into place making sure they're doing their job right and then you can work on marketing sales things like that so it's you can't be out in the field every day unfortunately and i know i'm gonna get a lot of hate for that people are gonna give me crap saying oh you're just lazy you're a millennial you don't want to work hard this and that I can promise you I outworked a lot of people this year. The number of hours I put in, a lot of people I outworked. Um, so yeah, I wanna be able to grow a much bigger company than what we are now. I'm talking like 50 to 100 employees like in the next 10 years. So that would be super exciting. That would be super exciting, but you can't manage that many people and be out on a landscape crew every single day. So. Depending on what your goals are, if you guys want to stay small, run one, two landscape crew, something like that, you don't have, you can be out in the field every day, you can do it. But that's not the direction I want to take the company. So you guys need to make a decision for yourselves and we need to make a decision for ourselves as to what direction the company wants to head and then we need to start putting people in place to be able to do so. So I think that was one of the last goals and that's the one I think I got the most hate for was people saying, oh, you're just a lazy millennial. So that's about that. So after going over those goals and kind of explaining to you guys the ones we hit and missed, um, and that last, so that goal, so the goal of kind of like actually just being able to step back into a manager, uh, manager, manager, boss, whatever you want to call it, position, really didn't achieve that this year at all. Um, I was thinking about hiring some people, and I just, I was scared. At the end of the day, I was scared. I was a scared. I was scared. We weren't. I was afraid we weren't going to have enough work to keep those people that I hired busy. And at the end of the day, I didn't want to be responsible for those people not being able to like make their payments on their house or rent or whatever it was, you know, to feed their families because I didn't bring in enough work for them. So I was scared. And basically what I did instead was I hired a lot of subcontractors, um, you know, that had their own stuff going on too. And I could kind of keep them busy and I hired subcontractors to do the work to an extent, you know, we had we had a lot of people working hand in hand with us, but that was a big part of it too, was finding subcontractors to do the work um, and then me out there helping them too. So we kind of had a decent little sized crew to be able to get stuff done. And then I was out there to make sure the quality of what they were doing is actually what we're, you know, wanting to do and we're proud of. So that's kind of how we achieved that this year, but definitely we didn't hire any, we didn't put anyone on payroll, right? We didn't have any W2 employees. Um, we had subcontractors and we had people using their own equipment and uh, it was all 1099. So that's, that's one way to do it. Um, but I would say to that extent, we, we met some great subs this year, met some great people and super happy for that. But would I say we accomplished the goal of actually putting together a better team? I would say no, because when I think of a better team of our company, I think of W2 employees, not subcontractors. So I would say no, we didn't hit that goal. And that means the only two goals we didn't hit was the subscriber count and kind of putting together a good team. With that said, going into the new year, I want to have those same goals, but like transfer over. We're going to try to get 40,000 subscribers again. We're going to still shoot for it. And we're going to try to put together a better team. Now, with that said, our plan is to buy, um, you guys who have followed is I've kind of branched out on my own, started my own business doing um, excavation, dirt work, things like that. And I want to be able to put together a team that can do that. And then also trying to buy my dad's landscaping company put it all together and have two different crews um, working on that end. So building a team this year is gonna be a lot more important um, if we can finally get dad to sell. And uh, yeah, so building a team, 40,000 subscribers, that's a couple of them. Um, sales goal, I haven't decided yet. I really haven't decided yet. Um, I've gotta go over profit and loss from our company and that company, put them together and then figure out what we would be capable of for next year. But I'm hoping by the time we do the two companies together, I would really like to shoot for 
probably around 2 million. 1.5 to 2 million in sales, I think would be a pretty healthy goal. Um, I think it's achievable. With the, the amount of work we put in this year, and if the economy holds out good, I know it's an election year, um, if the economy holds out, I do think it's achievable. All right, so to sum up my goals, that's basically it for me, is just 40,000 subscribers, um, develop a good team of people, just find good people this year. So if you guys are in the area, seriously, we're gonna be hiring people this year. Um, we're looking for good guys. Comment down below, get a hold of me, however you gotta. Um, my email's like somewhere on the channel, so shoot me an email, right? We're looking for good guys. Um, and then that 1.5 to $2 million in sales is the goal for this year. I think we're gonna just stick with those three for this year. But a big part of this video, you guys, is just kind of explaining that for you young guys out there, you guys that are starting, like it is possible to go from nothing. Like the year before this, we had zero. We had no sales. I mean like December snow plowing, but that was it. But so we had literally like no sales. Um, we went to zero to 300, just under, it was like 340 and change, 340,000 in sales in one year. With that said, we spent like $8,000 to $10,000 in marketing. So I mean, like it's not crazy, but you're gonna have to have some money to invest. I put eight to 10 grand in up front, bought a bunch of equipment up front of my own hard earned money. And uh, I mean, the saying that the saying of it takes money to make money, it definitely holds true. So you guys gotta be willing to put up some money of your own um, and really make that investment. So that's something to think about as well. But it's definitely possible for you guys that are considering it, it's definitely possible. So all you gotta do is get out there and do it make new connections, meet new people, market, Google ads, Facebook, you know, whatever you gotta do, send out mailers, things like, you guys, we're in the landscape industry, mailers work. Send out mailers, like they do work. It's not, I know a lot of people are like, oh, spend money on Facebook, spend on this. Mailers do work, like there's a lot, we got a lot of, we get a lot of work off of just mailers every single year. Is it the best way to spend the money? I don't know. I don't know, I haven't spent enough money on marketing to really know the answer to that. Um, but every industry is gonna be different. Now, if you're in a tech business or selling cars, I mean like, no, don't send mailers. But in our industry, mailers do work still. Um, it is kind of an old school industry. It is kind of, people wanna see products, they wanna feel it, they wanna, I mean like, it's a little bit old school still. So you gotta keep that in mind. But uh, yeah, those are the goals. You guys out there that are thinking about doing it or starting, you can do it. Just get out there and do it, literally. You just gotta get out there and do it. So, we will see you guys next time. Stay tuned, make sure you are subscribed. We got a lot of videos coming up. We got videos about this guy. We got videos about the L9000 restoring it. We got snow plowing videos, so much stuff coming up, you guys. Happy New Year.